I recently surveyed over 10,000 aspiring mixing engineers, and overwhelmingly, the number one struggle that they all seemed to face was some form of getting mixes to translate. In order to help my students and address this issue, I've created an entire masterclass called, get this, the Mix Translation Masterclass. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested to check that out, but we're also gonna feature a bunch of content here on the channel related to getting your mix to translate. Now, if you Google search YouTube, you're gonna find a lot of stuff that just says the magic's in the mid-range. It's all about the mid-range, and there's a lot of truth to that, but if your mix is not translating, I think it's safe to say you probably don't have a very good mix to begin with. At least that's my experience over 10 years doing this, looking at other people's mixes, helping amateurs turn to pro. The fact of the matter is you got low end issues, you got top end issues, you got mid range issues, you got arrangement issues. There's a whole plethora of stuff happening that can prevent a mix from translating, not just a weak mid range. So uh, we're going to look at that here on the channel today. I've got my man David from the Mix Academy's VIP membership. He submitted a mix for critique and we're going to do the critique right here together. He gave me permission to share it with you. Lots of stuff that uh, his is actually a really good mix. We're going to look at some creative ideas to help the mix stand out. We're going to look at uh, sonic frequency range things that are happening that we need to tighten up. And uh, yeah, so we're going to dive in. This is the first video in the series. But again, check that out. If you're interested in the full course, I'll put a link in the description. So right out of the gate, we're going to hit play. But if you don't want to listen to the full mix, maybe just listen to the first little bit. I'll put a timestamp where you can skip ahead to where we start breaking down. Uh, I've got about a page of notes here that we're going to look at together. So here we go. We're going to play the song and dissect this mix for my man, David. Great track, fun song, 
lots of energy, really digging it. I got a lot of notes, but it doesn't mean that this is a bad mix. It's actually one of the better mixes that's ever been submitted uh, to me through the Mix Academy. So super pumped to dive in, but I, real quick before we get going, anyone who's interested to have me critique your mix like you're going to see here, I'll put a link below. I have a custom mix critique service. I also offer this for annual and lifetime members of the Mix Academy. So we'll put that down in the description. But with that, let's dive in. So uh, David, addressing specifically to you, so your mix, great work, man. You got a great song here. For those of you watching, David mentioned he uh, is in the post world, so audio for post and uh, video production. So he hasn't mixed in, I think he said like 10 years, eight years, something like that. I was reading in the, the Mix Academy Discord. So to come back into music and deliver a mix like this, killer job. So Dead Space after the Tom intro fill, and a lot of these are very specific. So Bear with me. We're just going to kind of work through them. Uh, there's some dead space here after the intro Tom Phil. Hey! Right there. That kind of, it's done. The Toms, there's no, uh. So what I was thinking there was a lot of times you want those tight Toms because in the context of the mix, you got the bass and the kick and all that kind of happening. Um, go ahead and duplicate those Toms. Uh, the Tom's tracks or what have you, but then let's extend the tail or open those up at these parts where they need a little more low end oomph, right? And so you got this kind of dead hey! before it hits, um, either kill everything. So it's like a dead stop or let's get some extension on them, get a little more oomph. So they carry over. Uh, I mentioned here in my notes or add a sub drop to hit down the middle with the floor Tom, uh, go into a sub splash. We'll go ahead and show you that. Need a little bit more low end from the toms overall. And then I said, if you add, let's see, if the added low end triggers, oh, we get it. Couple, couple things here. We're complicating it here right out of the gate. But um, I went ahead. I pulled in an 808. I don't know if it's tuned correctly, but it'll serve the purpose. Um, I think I originally had this here, like on the floor tom. Let's find that floor tom. Nah, it's like, let's zoom in on that transient. I think it's right here. And then let's put that back where it was. Hey! But then that's kind of weird. I would say give the, the toms more low end so they extend to the one. And then let's put that back on the one. So adding 808 was another one of my notes at the beginning here. doesn't have to be that loud. I'm using it for example sake, but uh, the toms give some more oomph and then the sub splash is the other thing. So uh, a cool trick that I do, not in every mix, but often is to find whether it's toms that have some impact and they need to, there's space for them to have kind of a, an awesome low end rumbly extent, extension, sustain, 808s, send 808s to it all the time. Maybe there's a kick drum hit, anything to trigger this extended bottom end sustain. Uh, I call it the sub splash, it's in my template. Very basically, it's a reverb, pick a reverb, five to seven seconds, whatever timing works for the song, and it's just some bottom end. In this case, I just took out the top end because an 808 is already going to have tons of bottom end, but sometimes I'll come in here and just boost the crap out of 30, 40, 50 hertz, whatever. You got to be careful around 100. That can get... because most speakers are going to produce that fairly well. And so you got to be careful how much you put in in that case. But sometimes I'm EQing out and whatever. But the point of it is get you this low end reverb so that you get some extension. And I'll solo. Here's this 808 with nothing on it. Just a straightforward 808, kind of a falling sound. And then I unmute the sub splash. You can kind of hear it there. Here's with the sub splash. Now, if you're on smaller speakers, laptop, tablet, that kind of thing, you're not going to hear much of that. But if you wanted to, you could even extend this up into kind of the, the mid-range. Not getting much there, so maybe we boost there. It's an 808, so it's pitched. It's super deep. It's not going to cut through. But So that right there, not just an 808, but an 808 with some character. And let's check that in the track, and I'll kind of back it off a little bit more. So, we went from... Hey! Sounds good, to a little extra. Hey! A 
just a little more. Bam, here I am. Punch you in the face. Start the song. Okay, so quick note there. 808, sub splash. Could be cool. And then I think I put those a couple spots in the song. Chorus. Chorus. And then the outro. This one was kind of weird to me. Let's go ahead and hit this note. At the end... That uh, bass drop, sub drop at the end, it's kind of like you have the bump, 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 and then boom. It's, I don't know. It's kind of anticlimactic to my ear. So what I was going to recommend was instead take out, obviously this is kind of like a mastering situation here. You wouldn't do this in mastering, but I only have a two track. I'm not working with the full mix. What I would do is maybe put an 808 or move that sub drop on the last tom hit, so you get something like this instead. And then let the synth and stuff ring out, so what was that pattern? Dun 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 dun, bum. Now that it's ended and not dun 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 dun, bum bum, whatever it was before. Um, that super st stupid, simple, quick note, small potatoes, but wanted to throw that out there. Uh, next up, the radio voice, let's go. These notes are all over the place, so we'll keep, uh, we'll keep moving. The uh, pan the radio voice in verse one. Let's go find verse one. Probably in here. So two notes with the radio voice. Number one, I think you can get a little more aggressive with the filters. Uh, my man Jordan over at uh, Hardcore Music Studio just dropped a plug-in called Telefy. Probably a perfect candidate for this. You can get really aggressive with it. It's got compression, saturation, the filters. Everything's built in. Uh, I think it even has like slap delay. Uh, they sent it to me. I got to check it out. But uh, the, the filters that I saw him doing with it. Sounded incredible, and so often with a mix, we get an idea, and it's like, okay, let's go grab the filters, and then let's put the compression and the saturate. You layer all these effects. It's all just built into one plugin. Um, another great way I use the Waves uh, Kings microphone for this all the time as kind of that first filter. Lots of boost in the mid range to kind of create a unique sound, and then uh, again filtering more, and then compression and saturation. So so stacking. Um, but I'd love to see your radio effect here, telephone effect be more um, more aggressive and then what I thought was let's get that uh, off to like the left or the right let me see you get put that off to like the side and take our interest from right down the middle over something a little bit interesting to kind of come in and, and go off to the right and then maybe that next one pan to the left and so now you've kind of given us little little tease to the right little tease to the left get some ear candy going for the left and right create some some more interest there make the delayed phrase i actually don't know what i think is i bring i bring the beat i think is what he's saying um more distant and a different effect where's that at those are so similar the telephone effect and the lead vocal, I just want to hear more of that to be more interesting, uh, a little more aggressive with the filters. And then also, what did I put there? Make the delayed phrase more distant. So maybe more saturation, um, a little reverb, something to kind of tuck it down and make us hunt for it almost so that it, it draws us in. And then that phrase there, I didn't put a note. Actually, I think it did put a note for creating doubles and uh, thickening parts for the vocal. That is a prime candidate right before the drums come in again um, to, to lift the vocal performance. And so we've got... Right before that next vocal, let's get something stereo where it's the doubled. If you don't have a double, obviously... He probably would have used it. Let's create a fake double with Waves Real ADT. You can use your stock delay. Uh, come in here and we'll go with just the stock Pro Tools delay. Any DAW is going to have you a stereo delay. What you're going to do for fake stereo is turn off the left, so 0% wet. And then the right, we'll put it like 35 milliseconds here. And that's going to create, so this track is already stereo, but now it's going to do this fake stereo thing. 
So for that phrase, I would love to have you set that up on a send or your favorite doubling plugin and go throughout the track and you'll find certain phrases that just are going to feel good to pop open and elevate above the track a little bit more before, um, to, to emphasize lyric, but also to kind of serve as a transition to that next section. Uh, so that let's see here, make delayed phrase, a different effect. We talked about that. The call and response vocals in the B section need to sound significantly different and maybe more ambience on the second part. I think that is that. I almost want those two vocals, the call and response thing happen in there to feel like two different singers or two completely two different sets of processing. Um, they're, they're so similar. They're not s distinguished enough. Uh, we'd love to hear that. Next note, the pre-chorus needs something to make it pop. I put a note here for automating the kick, snare, and hat hits right before. Um, so that's, that's one note to help the pre-chorus pop a little bit. Let's talk about that. Where, so I've said automate the kick, snare, hats right before the phrase. Hands up, hands up. Probably right there. Yeah, okay, so right here, this is what I was talking about. Um, before the kick snare flam pattern. So for anyone listening not familiar with the term flam, this kick snare flaming, so two snare hits, one right after typically around like a 64th note. This part right here. Right before that, this section right in here, listen to just before that. Kumpach, the hi hat, open hi hat hits. Yeah, the kick, snare, and open hi hat that happens right here. Let's get that up and let this, it's pretty much right before the transition. Let that serve as a drum fill. Let's automate the level of the kick, the snare, and the open hi hat. Let me hear that a little bit more to create that excitement for the next section. A uh, little bit of automation there. Uh, then let's see, maybe add some room sound to the drums or a crushed amp tone here, something to make the kick snare flam section pop. So something here to change the drum sound a bit. Like a room sound, uh, bust the drums, kick snare, toms, whatever into like a Sanzam kind of vibe, a crushed room sound and pull that up here a little bit to create some separation for the drums. Uh, something interesting there right before the chorus is great. The chorus is driving, you know, smacks you in the face. You got, you got great sounding drums, the transients are, all of it sounds really good, but something here to create interest before the chorus. Next note, the chorus needs to be louder. I mentioned here the stereo bus trick back to zero dB. So here we go. Uh, I've talked about this on the channel before anyone watching, basically the stereo bus loudness trick is going to be to drop your overall mix 1 dB from the beginning, okay? And then at the chorus, sometimes at the pre-chorus, I'll lift it up as well a little bit. But here at the chorus, let's go here. I've already actually, yep, out here I did the trick. But let's go ahead and we'll do it again here for the chorus. Bam. Okay, so, but in order for that to work, I got to come in here and drop this 1 dB. For example's sake, bear with me just a second. There we go. Okay, so now we'll say you've got your mix down from the very beginning to minus one. Maybe this intro right here, we'll pull that back up to zero. Now the intro, this stuff happening here, but then bam, at the one to however far out, we'll pull that back up to zero dB. So now we've brought it up a dB. So now not only do more instruments come in and you kind of get that that effect of boom, the song starting, now the volume is going to jump and help it kind of create more excitement. Hey! Same thing at the chorus. So we'll go out here. Hey! 
right there. So got that 808 happening. Sounds sick. It's kind of like the, what was that? Boys Like Girls mixed by CLA, I think. Um, very similar kind of vibe, this song. Because we'll just say for that whole chorus, I'm not obviously highlighting all of it, but let's look at the effect. Here's without it. We'll turn this off. It jumps a little bit because it's well arranged, but now let's put it back on. Right on. And so for this track, it may be a little bit much. Maybe half a dB would work better. Um, actually, maybe what you do is you pull it down the full dB, but then the pre-chorus, you lift it up half a dB, and then at the chorus, pull it back that other half dB to get back to zero. Could be a great effect. Uh, we'll take that note off and move on. Let's see. Boom. Chorus needs to be louder. Done deal. 808 at the chorus with the subsplash. We talked about that at the beginning. Uh, the scream chant needs some ambience, maybe a layer of room sound and stereo delay. And I think that's after the chorus. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, that part right there. Oh, yeah. yeah, let's get that sitting on top of the track more. Send it to a, a long reverb. Yeah, something like that and get it sitting up. I think it would be really cool right now. It's just kind of like, yeah. Need a little more more energy to that. Keyword for this song is energy, excitement, getting this thing to just different parts to kind of ear candy and and sit and have uh, have some cool effects going on. Um, let's see, around a minute twenty, we need to automate something to his held out note. This is huge. I, all the time, I'm giving this note to people with mixed critiques. Around a minute twenty. Holding that note out. It's, it's the same vocal effect, right? Let's get a reverb throw. Let's get a delay throw to come in and spill out stereo. Something unique here. Um, oh, you know what? Real quick. The yeah, I came up with some processing. It was to filter them. What was it? The delay was a stereo delay. Ah, I, We already talked about that. We don't need to go through it. A delay into a reverb. Something cool would be cool there. I think. Did I... Oh yeah, so I pulled them apart. I will play this for you real quick and then we'll go back to that thought. Oh, yeah. Hear that? Yeah. Obviously, I only have a two track to work with, but uh, that effect, let's pull it up even more. Oh, yeah. Without it, oh, yeah. it's just kind of eh, underwhelming. So. Cool effect, delay into reverb, filter it, gets those yeah sitting on top. Uh, that 120, the note at 120 again. Boom, right here. Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and create it together. So go to your vocal, we'll go, if you're in Pro Tools, go down to new track. We'll call this, let's just do verb throw for now, but the same process for creating a delay throw. And we'll use my trusty Valhalla here. And the vintage verb is great. We're going to throw that on. Uh, I don't care what type of reverb you use, but this is cool too. Come over here, drop the rate for the modulation or whatever reverb you end up using. Go with a really low modulation rate and a high depth. It's an awesome sound. It creates this nice silky texture, the chorusing, and the reverb tail. So here we go. We're going to take a look at throwing this, and we'll go ahead and throw it to like five or six seconds. And then now... We're going to raise this up. We're going to automate the send into the reverb for that, that line. Back up a little bit. Obviously, it's a two-track. Anyone listen back, this would be specific to the lead vocal track. But for example's sake, here we go. Not happening too well. That reverb in particular is not working. I tell you what, let's go with the delay. Um, boom, 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 boom. And I want to use here, we'll use a stock delay. So we'll throw maybe an eighth on the left, a dotted eighth on the right. And we'll pull this is on a send, so we'll go 100%. And for the rate, we're going to go 0.25. Okay. And depth, we're going to go all the way up 70, 80%, something like that. And we're going to shift click. Uh, I guess the shift click is only if you're doing it at the same time. So we'll throw this on. 
and 0.25. Cool. And then now let's see what we get from this. It'd be nice to have some feedback. Boost that like crazy. Again, in this situation, it's hard to, I think you get the point. A delay throw or a reverb throw there is probably all I needed to say. Uh, you got a good mix. You probably know exactly what I'm talking about. This also could be, again, remember I mentioned using doubles for the uh, certain phrases. That's a prime candidate for not just the reverb or delay throw there or both, but uh, also a, mod a doubled effect. Modulate a little bit of that up. What you may find is when you add those effects, you start stacking effects, you may need to actually automate the lead vocal to uh, come down there, like a fade out on his voice, on the dry voice, with those other, especially a modulation effect coming in, you may need to offset that a little bit so that the vocal doesn't take over and get too loud. But um, okay, moving on, let's see. Vocals, look for phrases to automate effects on. There you go. Uh, next note, make delays at 122 stereo to add interest out wide. Quick look at that. That filtered effect again, that delay um, happening. Maybe, man, maybe make that a left, right kind of thing. So it's happening and dragging our interest out wide. Uh, so it's not everything vocally right down the middle. Um, a high cut filter automation at 138. Let's go check that. So high cut filter, I wonder if I have it on here. Yeah, so this is what I was messing with when I was creating the critique notes. Something there to have something sweep down. Um, but not everything like this, but something there to, uh, to kind of suck it all out and then bam, the chorus happens and it hits again and explodes. Uh, boom, boom. Let's check these notes off so we don't keep going through and make delays. We talked about that. High cut filter automation. Kill the synth and make a full dead stop at 231.5. All specific with my note here. 231. Okay, right here. That synth. I mean, you're getting really picky for me to say that. I don't think it's going to sound good here as a dead stop. It doesn't sound good to take care of, take everything out. But the, the synth continuing on, I would kill that so the synth doesn't delay. Yeah, I, th I think that's what I was referring to there was possibly killing the synth um, so that the vocals last thing you hear, bam punches you in the face um da, 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 da. on the ending stutter vocals try some extreme distortion or saturation the stutter vocals at the end so it's probably coming in those i feel like those can just get those on top of the mix a little more grit saturation um get those up i think is is basically what i'm saying there and uh moving on so ending the last tom should be the last hit of the song we talked about that with the 808 uh fade out ends abruptly if the sound ends quick like that i'd send it to a reverb so let's listen to what i'm talking about there the end is abrupt. So let's mute what I did with the 808. Yeah, I mean, a little cleaner tail, maybe, uh, but maybe a fade out. But yeah, if we if you take me up on the 808 idea, um, let me know if you don't have any good 808s, by the way. Uh, speaking to David now, not everyone out there on YouTube, but uh, let me know, email, and I'll, I'll hit you with some that I've created that sound great. Uh, it'd be cool to use those in. You can tune them and all kinds of stuff. So that ends a little bit abruptly. No big deal. Small potatoes, my last note, around 2 minutes, 2.15, there's a high-end noise. And I actually heard this throughout the track in a couple other spots. Um, I can't quite make out what it is. So let's go to 2, 2.15. This top end like production hack kind of thing it almost feels like a bad edit. Uh, let's see if we can pick it out. It is. It's the kind of thing happening on the right ear. Yeah. 
it's like an anticipated hit. I mean, that's small potatoes, no big deal. Um, to me, it just it felt like it either needed to come up and stand out a little bit more, or be filtered so it's not sh- and it's more sh- like if that makes sense. So instead of featuring, if you come in here, if you go to that production track, um, if it's not on its own track, you might be limited to this, but maybe pull out some of this uh, and pull up some of that kind of thing, 1K or something. Uh, but again, small potatoes. So David, there's a critique. You guys watching on YouTube, man, thanks for sticking with me. Hopefully you enjoyed that. You can learn a ton by dissecting up against a reference, which is what I did. In fact, I probably should show that off. Eh, I've shown that off a ton on the channel. Go check out the low end trick. I'll link it above and down below uh, where you can filter out, learn how to filter out, not just pull in a reference and compare your song to another. That's not going to do very much for you. But if you really get in and you drop with a, a high cut filter, and you listen to what your bottom end is giving you. I'll show you super quick. You listen to just what 20, 30, 40 hertz. Does your kick, uh, is it rumbling there? Is it extended too much? And then you click over to a reference, it's often more than not going to be tight and punchy. And so reverse engineer what's going on there. You got to gate your kick more or you got to use trigger and drop the curves really, really tight. Uh, open that up a little bit. How's your kick base relationship? You can really hear a lot when you get in and inspect your mix up against uh, a reference. Uh, a couple of things to keep in mind. Definitely want to make sure you're going through a loudness chain when you pull in a reference. It's been mastered. You want to make sure your mix is at least going through some sort of loudness processing. Again, check out the full video where I go through all the detail on that. And then also uh, level match. Even if you throw it through level uh, processing, you may not be able to get it quite to what a mastering engineer would. Um, check out my Mastering in the Box workshop. I'm going to show you exactly how to deliver industry level uh, loudness when you need it, whatever. You got to serve the client. But um, uh, loudness processing, level match is still important because if you don't get it quite as loud, um, you still want to make sure you pull down that level of the of the reference track so you can compare the apples to apples but uh anyways david thanks again for sharing your track and uh, giving me the opportunity to share some thoughts trusting my ears to help you you guys check out that uh <laughs> forgetting the name of my own course i've renamed it like three times but the mixed translation master class complete start to finish to help you deliver incredible mixes go from amateur to pro and then also to help them translate and sound great everywhere so there you go links in the description we'll see you guys in the next one